Lecture 3, Modular Arithmetic. We define x to be equivalent to y mod z if their difference, x minus y, is a multiple of z. So for example, if we're working mod 12, we know that 3 p.m. is the same thing as 15 o'clock mod 12. Since their difference, 15 minus 3 equals to 12, is a multiple of 12. I can also start off with 3, add a multiple of 12, like 24. 3 plus 24 is 27. So I know that 3 is equivalent to 27 mod 12. Since 27 minus 3 equals to 24, a multiple of 12. I also know that 3 is equivalent to minus 9 mod 12. Since minus 9 minus 3 equals to minus 12, a multiple of 12. Note that if x minus y is a multiple of z, we also know that y minus x will also be a multiple of z. So to determine that 3 is equivalent to minus 9, I also could have done 3 minus a minus 9 equals to 12, which is also a multiple of 12. In our last example, we will note that 12 is equivalent to 0 mod 12 since 12 minus 0 equals to 12, a multiple of 12. In nicer font, we will note that 3, 15, 27, and minus 9 are all equivalent mod 12, since if I take any pair of these and subtract them, I will get a multiple of 12. We also note that 12 is equivalent to 0 mod 12. You have known mod 12 arithmetic ever since you learned how to tell time. Note it doesn't matter what symbol I use for 12, whether it be the number 12 or the Roman numeral 12. If we start at 12 o'clock, well then after 12 hours passed, our clock will still show 12 o'clock. And we can use any representative we want for 12. So in mod 12 arithmetic, 36, 24, 12, 0, minus 12, these will all be equivalent mod 12. Similarly, 9 plus any multiple of 12 will be equivalent. So 9, 21, 33 will all be equivalent mod 12. To reiterate, a number of different symbols can be used to represent 12. I can spell it out, I can use the Roman numeral, or if I'm working mod 12, all of these numbers will represent 12. The preferred representative for a multiple of 12 when working mod 12 will actually be the number 0. It's easier to work with. Similarly, if I have the number 13, well, I would prefer to work with its representative 1. 1 is also equivalent to, if I subtract off 12, minus 11. These are all equivalent when I'm working mod 12, but 1 is easier to work with, so we'll take that as its preferred representative. So when I'm working in Z mod 12, I'll generally prefer to work with numbers that are between 0 and 11. And so Z mod 12 consists of the 12 objects these numbers 0 to 11. That makes arithmetic much easier. 13 is equivalent to 1, 12 is equivalent to 0, so 13 plus 12 is the same as 1 plus 0, which is 1 mod 12. I know that 15 is equivalent to 3, 72 is equivalent to 0, and so instead of doing 15 plus 72, well, I would rather add 3 plus 0. In either case, I will get 3 mod 12. Note that all these additions make sense on a 12-hour clock. I can also use any representative I want. So I can note that 23 is equivalent to 11, or I can note that it's equivalent to minus 1. Similarly, minus 16 is equivalent to minus 4 is equivalent to plus 8. So no matter how I subtract 16 from 23, 
I will always get a number equivalent to 7 mod 12. Instead of working mod 12, we will mostly work with integers mod 2, which is best illustrated via a light switch. So a light switch works via mod 2 arithmetic. So if I start off with 0, i.e. no light, and I add 1, I now have light. If I add another 1, I'm at 2, no light, plus 1, 3. So in other words, if I hit my switch, if I start off with 0, and I hit my switch an odd number of times, well, now I'm still at the light is on. So an odd number, whether I've hit it three times, five times, seven times, the light is on. So that's all equivalent to one light. Versus if I start off with it off, so I'm now at zero, and I hit the switch an even number of times. Well, zero is the same as two, is the same as four. My light is still off. So that's mod two arithmetic. So in mod 2 arithmetic, all even integers are equivalent to 0 mod 2, while all odd numbers are equivalent to 1 mod 2. Thus, when working in z mod 2, we only need two objects, 0 and 1, since 0 can represent any even integer and 1 can represent any odd integer. We can also denote z mod 2 by z mod 2z, since we have collapsed all the even integers to 0, and thus all the odd integers to 1. Thus, when working mod 2, any even integer is equivalent to 0 mod 2, while any odd integer is equivalent to 1 mod 2. This last equation, 1 equal to minus 1, is particularly nice. It means we can drop minus signs in working mod 2, since the negative odd number will still be odd even if we drop its minus sign. So minus 3 will be equivalent to 3, will be equivalent to 1 mod 2. Similarly, an even number, regardless of whether it is positive, negative, or 0, will still be equivalent to 0 mod 2. Addition is especially easy when working mod 2. Note, by the way, that mod is short for modulo. If we add two even numbers, we still get an even number. So 4 minus 10 will be equivalent to 0 mod 2. Even plus odd gives us an odd number. So I know that 24 plus 15 is an odd number, and thus it equals to 1 mod 2. And odd plus odd gives us an even number, so an odd number plus an odd number will always equal to 0 mod 2. Note the main reason for working mod 2 is for computational efficiency. Not only is it easier for us to work mod 2, but doing computations on a computer can be much faster if we work mod 2. But information can be lost. For example, mod 2 I know that 24 plus 15 is equivalent to 1 mod 2, and thus an odd number. But I lose the fact that when working in standard arithmetic, 24 plus 15 is really 39. But for computation, the speed gained working mod 2 can be very helpful. For example, when working mod 2, I don't have to care about orientation. If I add the cycle E1 plus E2 plus E3, to the cycle E3 plus E4 plus E5, well then I get E1 plus E2 plus 2E3 plus E4 plus E5. But 2 times E3 is the same thing as 0 times E3. And thus I get the cycle E1 plus E2 plus E4 plus E5 when working mod 2, since 2E3 is the same thing as 0. We will discuss formal sums with mod 2 coefficients in the next lecture.